All right, people, let's come to that time of the year again. It's the top 10 list for the South African boxers of 2019. I waited right up until the last day of the year before doing this video and, of course, you know, talking about who is the best because I wanted to wait for all the results to be penned. Oh, there was a couple of pending results. I was going to wait and see. Now it's time to get through that list and uh, let's get straight to it. At number 10, we have got the golden boy. Azinga Fuzile. Uh, Azinga Fuzile, of course, uh, had that IBF elimination title shot, which is still pending because of a little bit of controversy surrounding the smelling salts of the Russian. Of course, Azinga Fuzile at very tricky southpaw. He's probably the most talented boxer of this era, I'd say, uh, you know, just being naturally talented. I don't see anyone else sort of that talented as him. Like, he's a world level boxer as well. Uh, he made a guy like Rakimov, who is an A-grade fighter, look like a C-grade fighter, up until he got caught. And of course, you are going to have the naysayers who say, well, he got caught and blah, blah, blah. But we are still waiting for the uh, IBF to come back with the findings, how they how they took that in. So anyway, Zinga Fuzile, if he had won that fight, it probably would have been a lot higher up that list. But because of the controversy and the fact, he still stays at number 10. At number nine, it's Ledumo Lamati, the Eastern Cape man himself, who has been adventuring around the world. I mean, you know, the fact is uh, he, he's had a few stumbling blocks along the way, but he still remains undefeated. And when I mean stumbling blocks, I mean, you know, lack of fighting, uh, lack of um, promotions and so forth. But now he's on board with Rumble Africa. He's getting regular action. We get to see a little bit more of him. He just recently won the IBF belt. Uh, he was going to fight on December 8th, but that got cancelled. And obviously, well, not cancelled, uh, uh, postponed until, a f uh, I think it's March or so. So yeah, he's a super ba IBF uh, intercontinental super bantamweight champion. You know, he's fought that one fight against that journeyman in the UK. Didn't really show the best, but he does sit at number nine. At number eight, we have Tulani, the Evolution Mbenge, the former bronze medalist at the Commonwealth Games, the former IBO World Welterweight Champion, a guy that used to at one point knock everyone out. Of course, building up through the ranks, everyone saw him as the big hitter um, in the welterweight division, the guy that's going to you know, go on and challenge the guys in America. There's a current speed bump that's been hit, and ever since then, he's kind of been promoterless. I'm not sure what's going on in terms of the promotion with Tulani and Benga because ever since the Formella fight, we haven't seen him. He didn't take any bad knocks. He just lost a very close points decision. So I'm not sure if he's promoted list or not. But anyway, he's a forgotten man. And um, don't forget him too soon. Hopefully we do see him back in the ring. At number seven, we have Lerato, lights out Glamini, the man that hails from Valcom in the Free State. One of the hardest hitting featherweights we have in the country. As you know from his amateur background, he's a former All-African gold medalist, a very well accomplished amateur. Uh, also the current WBC silver featherweight champion of the world with that extremely crafty win against Dave Penaloza where he dropped Penaloza twice. Penaloza, of course, coming from a boxing family, um, at one stage training with the great Manny Pacquiao, you know, the Philippines, sort of the next Filipino and Lorato Clamini put a big halt on that man's career. Um, when he fought in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Lorato Glamini also lights out. I mean, let's not forget about uh, where he got the nickname for when he knocked out Sinatema Bam with a pearl of a left hook. Uh, that uh, knockout of the year um, accolade that he got given was for that. And I mean, who else would carry the name lights out but that man, Lorato Glamini. At number six, we have the former IBO welterweight champion of the world. We had a former one earlier in Tulani Mbenge. Now we get to number six, and it's Chris Van Heerden's turn uh, to be another IBO world welterweight champion on our list. He is based in America, and he's been based in America for, I believe, about three, four years now. So he's really been putting in a shift that side and sort of building up, you know, the reputation of the South Africans that side. Um, he's fought the likes of Errol Spence Jr. and a whole bunch of other undefeated fighters that that he got the win. I think Errol Spence is the only loss he's taken um, since he's made the move. So, you know, kudos to him. Uh, I think he gets a lot of negativity for the move, but at the end of the day, you know what, he's, he's, he's gone and done something with his career over there. And I think, I think that's a, a very hard uh, thing to do to kind of just take that move and go. 
but he's managed to do it. He's also managed to line himself up uh, signing for top rank, which is another uh, great achievement. Whether he's been built up to fight a guy like Terence Crawford, that would be really cool to see. Um, so long as he keeps winning, I don't see why he would be denied the opportunity. So anyway, that is our very own Chris Van Heerden at the number six position in South Africa. At number five, it's DJ Creel, um, also based in the United States of America, like the number six Chris Van Heerden. Uh, DJ moved uh, just over a year ago, so he's kind of new to the, the USA scene. You know, but from speaking to him, he's learned and grown so much. He became the IBF uh, strawweight champion of the world in that time. A guy that has a work ethic like no other. He's always in the gym, uh, always training every day, whether he's getting a fight or he's not getting a fight. And I can tell you it's been frustrating for him not getting that many fights. But that's part of the, the process when you're moving to the United States of America is to go through those frustrating periods. And he's managed to, to go through that, become a world champion, uh, vacate his title, win a fight in Mexico, and potentially lining himself up for a, another world title at a higher weight division um, in, in, in 2020. So we look forward to his career. He's currently sitting at number five. He's got a lot to achieve in his career. Still very, very young, and all the best to him. At number four, and he's recently dropped from last year's list, is Zolani Lasborn Tete. Uh, unfortunately for him, took that loss against Casemiro. Whenever you take a heavy loss like that, naturally you're going to fall down the list. But that does not mean that you lose, you lost your ability and so forth. We do believe that Zelani comes back and, and does something, probably becomes a world champion again. He got caught. Casemiro can, can do some damage. I mean, we saw numerous fights with Casemiro uh, in the past. The man comes to fight, typical Filipino fight, fighter, rather. Um, but yeah, Zelani Tete, how can you deny the former WBO IBF world champion? The man's accolades speak for themselves. 2019 might not have been the best year for him, but 2019 doesn't push him back that far. It pushes him from number two to number four um, in the ratings from last year. Uh, so look, Zelani, I mean, he's well accomplished. He has a highlight reel knockout against Paul Butler. And no one will ever forget that he's gone on a reign. He signed for Queensbury promotions with Frank Warren. So what he's done in his career justifies his position in fourth. Anyway, at number three, we have Kevin Two Guns Lorena. He's propped up the list quite a bit. And, you know, when we talk about opposition, he has fought um, guys that are, you know, highly rated, at least on box rec. So I couldn't ignore those facts when considering him to be number three on the list. Um, he's the current RBO World Cruiserweight Champion. He's highly rated in all the sanctioning bodies now, um, except for the WBO, I believe. But anyway, they all, all the other main ones he's rated in. Um, Starting to campaign internationally, he's got that, that fight against uh, Firat Arslan, which has come under slight criticism, but uh, at the end of the day, Firat Arslan is also well-rated, so you know, you got to get rid of what's in front of you, and I think that's always a, sort of something that Kevin says. He's, you know, he takes care of business one at a time. He's fighting in Germany is another obstacle. He's fought in Azerbaijan before, so that were, and Denmark, uh, so those were, were, were tests now, and then Germany will be his third international fight, and let's hope he goes out there and defends his IBO world title and then gets a crack maybe at, you know, some big names, um, maybe a warm-up against a guy like Riyad Murdi or something like that, you know, um, just, you know, to get that out, uh, to get that exposure internationally. I know those sort of guys are, are tough. Um, he's also South Africa's social media king, I believe. Um, if anyone has to follow the example of a social media guy, it would be uh, Kevin Lorena. Uh, so guys that are young out there look to follow sort of what he's doing in his career. And... Uh, you still have to have ability, but you know he's doing it the right way, and uh, he's in the third position. At number two, and due to unfortunate events, didn't fight this year. Um, his last fight was actually on New Year's last year, but it will fall on because it, it is literally a year from the day that he fought um, when I'm doing this review. So literally just made it by one day is Heki Butler, the South African mini giants, what do we call him? The, the, the small guy that does it all. You know, he's a great, he's going to be a, uh, he's going to go down in the hall of fame. Probably, you know, the things that he's achieved, the ring magazine title, um, you know, he's been based overseas boxing for the last two years. You know, when you're based overseas, you're doing something. When you're winning overseas, you're doing something, you know, um, if you're sitting here in South Africa and you know, campaigning, it's a good start, 
but you got to get there eventually. You know, you go overseas and you campaign and you seen by the global audiences. So that's a that's that's why that's why Hickey remains at number two because the opposition you, you remember that when you when you structure this uh, top ten list, the opposition you fight is heavily considered. Hirutu Kiyaguchi, the guy that he had fought last, which he didn't beat, is still rated the number one in his weight division. So in looking at that, you can't take Hickey down the list, especially um, in the manner in which he fought. Um, was another guy that works really hard, you know. A guy that will outwork anyone in a fight, gives it all until the very last round. I haven't seen as many boxers as good as Hickey worldwide, never mind just in South Africa, which is why he's kept the second place. Hickey, the executioner butler. And the absolute undisputed number one, I mean, how could you even... Like, you guys all knew this before I even made this list that Maurizio Mussolini was going to be number one. Um, it's an obvious one, isn't it, Maruti? Like, you know, he's a South African sportsman of the year. Don't even worry about this, the code of boxing and the fact, you know, that he's just singled out to one sport. He's the number one South African sportsman in the entire country. So, you know, how could he not be number one on this list? He's the current IBF world champion. He's defended it now three times on the trots in foreign countries. A bit of a road, a road warrior himself, just like uh, Brian Mitchell. He is the flyweight king. There's no other king in the flyweight division that comes close to Maurizio Mussolini and his ability. He's just South Africa's gem. You know, a guy that we point to that actually legitimately puts us on the map. People talking about Maurizio Mussolini. That's the number one. And of course, uh, lastly, he signed by MTK Global. So he's also getting that outreach and uh, sort of moving on to that other level where he gets the opportunities to explore the other countries of course you have to you can't defend your major world titles in south africa unfortunately the economy is not conducive to such things unfortunately but i believe and i think you'd have a serious problem with you if you didn't think maritim talane is number one that's just it so that's 2019 thank you everybody for watching this episode um I hope you guys like the list. And of course, I'd like you to comment and make your own list. If you don't agree with my list, feel free to say so. I know a lot of people will probably have sort of the same sort of people in there, but maybe chop and change the orders. Um, I've just gone according to relevance of the fighter, um, who they fought, um, opposition, their titles, and of course, just how well matched they were as well to make uh, the great... I mean, if you're having someone that's just accumulating a long record and fighting absolutely nobody... They don't, they don't, they don't uh, get on that list because the, f the moment they all step up, they'll slip up, so to speak. Um, so yeah, guys, have your say and uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. I will see you next year. Aight, cheers.